everybody. Welcome back to Pagan's Reading Nook. My name is Pagan, and I am so glad to be with you guys this week. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about last month's TBR, what I got through, what I didn't, and then we're going to talk about today's, or I'm sorry, May's TBR, and we are going to start by diving in with the ones from last time. Now, as you guys know, I had quite a few books on my TBR. If you haven't actually listened to that episode, you can go back and listen to it, but it's not crucial that you listen to it prior to listening to this one. If you want to, it'd always be much appreciated, but if not, that's okay. So my TBR from last time, I had lots of different titles on it. Uh, ones including The Dream Seeker, which if you're a follower of the show, you got to hear the interview with Robin Burks, the author of The Dream Seeker, which was such a good book. Um, I will tell you guys every time if it is a great book, I will literally promote the living crap out of it because I want everybody to read it and enjoy it as much as I did. Robin's book was fantastic. And the interview with her was also fantastic. It was so much fun catching up with her. Uh, she and I are old friends, and it was really awesome to catch up with her. So if you haven't gotten to listen to that episode, now's your chance. Go listen to that one. But moving on from that one, that one was so great. Ah, oh, the next one that I, I didn't finish it. I couldn't. I wanted to. I wanted there to be such high hopes for this book. It sounded so good. And that was the Gilded Princess book. I couldn't finish it at all. And I'm not saying that it's not somebody else's cup of tea. For me, I didn't enjoy it at all. I, It was just not a good book, in my opinion. And I just found it, the characters to be whiny. And it was choppy. And it was hard for me to figure out who was who. And I just, it wasn't a good book, in my opinion. So... Does that mean I won't recommend it? No, of course not. It is some, going to be somebody else's cup of tea. It was not mine. And that's how I feel about most books. Unless the book has, you know, like it's a nonfiction book that has misleading information. That's the only time I will tell you don't buy the book. <laughs> Other than that, if that sounds like it's your cup of tea and you want to know more about it, please go look it up. It might be your cup of tea. It might be something that you really enjoy. And if that's the case, awesome. For me, it was a no-go. And I'm really glad I actually didn't buy the book. I would have been really mad if I had bought the book. Uh, luckily, I had it on Kindle Unlimited. And so I was able to just return it, which was nice. Now, the next one that I got to read, which was fantastic, which was Bonded by Thorns. And that's by Elizabeth Helen. Bonded by Thorns is still in the number one spot. It is the book that I will go back to over and over and over again to read. It kicked my number one book of all time out of the spot and moved right on in. Uh, I think about this book almost daily, actually. It's kind of, I don't know if that's a good thing or a sad thing, but either way, I think about this book daily. I am in love with it. I cannot wait for book two. June cannot come fast enough for me to get this book. Um, it, it's one of the best books I've ever read. And honestly, I, I literally fight the urge on a daily basis to go open my Kindle and read it again and again and again. I'm in love with the characters. I love all four of the princes as if they were my own. I buy the book. Simply just go buy the book. Go get it. It is on Kindle Unlimited. It was so good. It is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but it is probably the best Beauty and the Beast retelling I have read to date. And I've read a few. I've read a few. And some live up to the hype, some don't. This one lived up to the hype and more. Uh, like I said, it's the best book that I have read to date and has kicked my favorite book of all time, which was Blood and Chocolate. And that one I has been on the number one book favorite list for, oh God, I read that in high school. So over 20 years, <laughs> it's been on that list for a very long time at number one. And it, it has lost the spot. It's actually just like been kicked off the list completely. I still love Blood and Chocolate, but uh, Bonnet by Thorns is my all-time favorite. The next book I actually got through was Hooked. And everybody who is on Book Talk knows of Hooked. It's by Emily McIntyre, excuse me. And 
it was phenomenal it was another book i could not put down i i fell so madly in love with hook and wendy in the beginning i wasn't a huge fan of her but i loved her character arc how she went from a kind of undesirable character of being very meek and very almost childlike in a lot of ways to realizing she has a voice she is a woman she is a badass and she has this beautiful arc which i loved so much for her and she became went from being kind of a character that i'm just like mm, i don't know if i really like you to a character that i'm like i absolutely love you you are a badass bitch let's get on with this you are so awesome and she really became that kind of character which i loved uh hook from <laughs> from the james and hook that you know his main name is james and then his uh nickname is hook and he oh he was captivating he was charming he was dangerous he was sexy he was everything you could possibly want in a villain that needed love he was perfect also the review for that came out today uh you can find that on hearthnc.com it is also on Amazon. It is also everywhere. So uh, anywhere you can find the review for it, it will be there. I loved that book. It was so good. It is also on my best books of the year list. It is on my favorites list at number two. And I, I hate that Robin's book has been kicked down to number three, unfortunately. Still top five. Still one of the best books I've read of the year. I love Robin's book, but oh, Hook stole my heart and has not given it back. Oh, he was so good. I cannot wait to read the rest of Emily's books. I have bought book two in the Never After series. Uh, they are all standalones. They're all their own stories, but they are a series of basically retellings of different stories. And so if that's your cup of tea, please go get the book. It is so good. It literally lived up perfectly to the hype. Oh, and also, if you don't like dark, uh, sexy books, Hooked is not going to be for you, just for the record. It is not a clean book. It is not a, it has some very dark, dark, dark stuff. It does have some violence in it. So make sure you check those trigger warnings before you read the book. But oh my God, it was so good. Oh, it is also a book that I cannot get out of my head. I think about it every day since then. And I finished this book three days ago so yeah in love with it cannot get enough i'm just i'm hooked <laughs> literally <laughs> pun intended uh the next one on my to be read list from last time was veiled magic uh by deborah blake i have not finished this book i have started it now this book i'm going to tell you as of right now it is a wonderful book it feels like a cross between charmed uh the dresden files and kind of meets like a cop show like blue bloods it, it has that really nice appeal to it i very much am enjoying it so far uh now this is an older book but i do enjoy it very much and so deborah's doing a really great job and she's keeping my interest with it so i'm loving it and I will keep you guys posted as I get through it. The book is a part of a series. There's three books in the series that I know of. I think there's three. And if it ends up being a really great series, I will definitely promote it and tell you guys all about it. And hopefully Deborah will also come on the show if I definitely enjoy the books because, you know, I don't want to really trash a book, but I will tell you if I don't like a book um, and tell you that it wasn't my cup of tea. Now, there are two more on my to-be-read list for this month that transferred over from last month, and that is Horseman. Horseman is A Tale of Sleepy Hollow by Christina Henry, and I also have Maiden of Belial, and that is by Becca Cabellus. Those two books have transferred over from last month as well. I have not gotten to them yet, uh, but as soon as I do, I will let you guys know and tell you my thoughts on them. Now, the ones that I've added for May are The Secrets That You Keep by Chloe L. Miller. And this is part of the Haven House series. There's two books in that series. This is book one. I do have a ARC request for book two. I just have to get through book one before I can get that ARC request. 
And this book is something that I'm very interested in and I'm excited to read it. I just have not gotten to it yet. It's been on my Kindle for about a week and a half now and kind of just eyeing me and keeps like, read me, read me. Here's the synopsis for you. Nestled deep in the endless pine forest and powdery white dunes of the Gold Coast sits a place like no other, a home where secrets are safe and family is everything. Welcome to Haven House. Evangeline Eddins despises change, prefers to live a life of routine safely inside walls of Haven House. But when the sanctity of her home is violated, Evie has to accept that things cannot remain the same. This includes her relationship with Samuel Fairweather, the man once meant to become her stepbrother. The pair's love-hate relationship reaches a turning point as evidence is found in a string of serial homicides that leads authorities straight to their already fragile family, with the FBI at their door and their tumultuous past returning to haunt them. Samuel and Evie must decide which secrets to tell before and which to keep before it's too late. Set against the history of Haven House, told in the voices of four uniquely different women, a twisted tale of love and betrayal reminds us that perspective is everything and avoiding one's destiny is never truly possible. This is a great book. It sounds very fascinating and very mysterious. I'm so excited to read it. And as soon as I do, I will let you all know my thoughts on it. And hopefully if I like it, I will also be telling you a little bit about book two once I'm able to after I get the copy of it. Moving on to the next book that I am so excited for is <laughs> A Dead and Stormy Night. It's a cozy fantasy with spice. It is part of the Nevermore Bookshop Mystery series. This is book one. And there are 10 books in that series that I know of. And they're all adorable, cute, wonderful little books. Let me tell you a little bit more about the synopsis of this. And then you guys can decide if you're going to go and read it with me. Book boyfriends may do it better, but they're more trouble than they are worth. After being fired from my dream fashion job, I return home to my village under a cloud of failure and take a job at a quaint Nevermore bookshop. I'm hoping for a few easy months while I get my life together, but this is no ordinary bookshop. A mysterious curse on Nevermore brings infamous fictional villains from classic literature to life in the real world. My easy job involves rescuing customers from a six foot four grumpy tattooed Heathcliff drinking tea and evading authorities with a suave villain Moriarty and making art with Edgar Allan Poe's shy cheeky raven shifter and I'm gonna butcher this Koth Quoth I don't know how exactly how it's pronounced but as if that's not crazy enough my ex-best friend shows up dead with a knife in her back and I'm the chief suspect. I'm going to have to Agatha Christie this shits if I want to clear my name. Oh, and those three fictional villains, they like to share. The Nevermore bookshop mysteries are what you get when all your book boyfriends come to life. Join a broody anti-hero, a master criminal, a cheeky raven, and a heroine with a big heart, and an even bigger book collection in this spicy, cozy fantasy series by the USA Today bestselling author Stephanie Holmes. So it sounds so cute and I cannot wait to read it. She also has new alternate covers that you can also purchase, which that was actually what led me to find her book. I saw a TikTok with the new cover on it and I fell in love and was like, I want that. So I did get the book on Kindle Unlimited, obviously, because of the fact that I want to make sure that I'm going to like the book before I go buy a hard copy of it. <laughs> hard copies are wonderful, but however, I have limited shelf space in my house and I already get so many books from publishers at my friends at Llewellyn and Wiser that my shelf space is quickly disappearing. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. I'm just saying that they send me a lot of wonderful titles that I get to look at and review as well. If you want to know more about those titles, you should check out my other podcast, which is Pagan's Witchy Corner, and you can find out more over there. I talk to the authors, tell you about the books, 
and we talk all about witchcraft and all sorts of other really great stuff. So if that's your cup of tea, head over there, make sure you subscribe, and also make sure you're subscribed to the show as well. So moving on to the next book, which I'm so excited for, that is Invoking the Blood, and that is of the Chaos and Darkness series that is by Callista Neath. I believe that's how you pronounce her last name. This, as far as I know, is an enemy to lovers, kind of Hades, Persephone, kind of vampire vibe book. And this is also a dark fantasy romance. So if that's your cup of tea, obviously check this book out. Uh, there are two books in that series. I know book two has not come out yet because I did apply for the arc for it. And as soon as I get through this book, I'll obviously get that one. But read through this book. I will let you guys all know what I think about it. And if it's my cup of tea, obviously so far from the synopsis, I'm in love and I really, really, really want to read it. I'm, I love Hades and Persephone. I love vampires. I love dark fantasy romance. It's, it's my jam. So I'm super excited about this one. The synopsis of this book is they agreed to her sister's brilliant idea to sneak into the hunter's moon ball. A night the vampires in attendance held sacred, lusting under the eerie glow of a blood-red moon. Faye was no vampire. She wasn't even a race that possessed magic. Her ceremony failed, making her an Arnarian, I hope I pronounced that correctly, a mortal without magic. After a run-in with the Shadow Prince, Faye begins dreaming of him, his yearnful gaze leaving her feeling cherished after she wakes. A pleasant daydream since men like him don't exist, at least not for women like her. But as the days passed and the dreams intensified, the shadow prince comes to her, his gaze filled with the same yearning he held for her in their shared dreams, until he realizes that she is an Arnarian. Abducted and confined in his home in hell, fate is left only with his promise to release her after he breaks the tie binding his life to hers. But with each heated exchange, she can almost see the man that she longed for in her dreams, the one who cherished her and tempted her heart. The book sounds incredible. I am so excited to read it. I cannot wait. And I will tell you guys all about it as I do. Finally, the last book of mine to be read is one that has been haunting me and is appropriately titled That is Haunting Adeline. I see this book everywhere, all the time on my Kindle, and all the time on TikTok and Book Talk. And Instagram. It is everywhere. And finally, I am adding it to my to be read because I cannot get enough of people talking about how good this book is, how incredible Zade is. And I'm, whew, I'm excited. If you have not heard of the book, let me tell you a little bit about the synopsis. So synopsis is not a traditional synopsis. It's different. Uh, but I will read it to you and you can decide what you think about this. If you want to know more, obviously, you should totally go and check out, basically just look up Haunting Adeline anywhere on TikTok and you'll be set. People will tell you all about the book. Now, it is not required, but it is highly suggested that before you read this, you should check out Satan's Affair first. Um, this book does have a lot of trigger warnings. Please check out the trigger warnings and the book does end on a cliffhanger just for those records. Um, this is a very, very dark book, um, but it sounds awesome. So just for the record, it's very dark. If you have trigger warnings, please check those out. You can see all the trigger warnings on the author's website and the author is HD Carlton, just for the record. This is a Amazon top 10 bestseller. And the synopsis reads as following. The Manipulator. I can manipulate the emotions of anyone who lets me. I will make you hurt, make you cry, make you laugh and sigh. But my words don't affect him. Especially not when I plead for him to leave. He's always there, watching and waiting. And I can never look away. Not when I want him to come closer. The Shadow. I didn't mean to fall in love, but now that I have, I can't stay away. I'm mesmerized by her smile, by her eyes, the way she moves, the way she undresses. And I will keep watching and waiting until I can make her mine. And once she is, I will never let her go, not even when she begs me to. Oh, it sounds so good. <laughs> uh, this is a two-book series outside of the novella. 
Um, the second book is called Hunting Adeline. It is a cat and mouse duet book. So just for the record, there are two books in this series. It sounds so good. Everybody talks about how good the book is and how much it absolutely lives up to the hype. I cannot read this or I cannot wait to read this and I am so excited for it. So that is my to be read list for this month. I know there's quite a few books in there that I'm trying to get through and I, oh, but some of them just sound so incredible and so good and I cannot wait. Um, I also have other books that will be on my to be reads for the coming months and if I get through all these before the end of the month, I will come back and let you know about the expanded to be read list. So tell me about some of yours. Tell me what you guys are reading, what you would recommend, uh, what you're in love with, what characters have enchanted you, entrapped you, whatever you want to call it, that you can't get them out of your head. I would like to hear all about them. Uh, now, I do know that on it, YouTube, you can comment and some aspects of uh, Spotify, you can also comment. I'm not exactly sure how that one works. I do know that you can, uh, but I also know that on iTunes, you can comment. So please tell me what you guys are reading, comment on this episode, review the show, tell me everything. I'm so excited to hear from all of you and I want to know what you guys like and what you would recommend and what you might want me to read and talk about here on this show. So this has been so exciting. I'm so excited for all these books and I will tell you guys everything as I go through them, whether I love them, whether I didn't like them, whatever it may be, I will tell you and I will recommend obviously the books that I love and if it's not my cup of tea, I will still recommend it because what is not my cup of tea may be somebody else's cup of tea and I hope that you guys will definitely check out those books and check out all this stuff and come read with me and we can talk all about it. If you would like to join my Discord, there is a link in the show description below, and you can come join the Discord. There is a reading nook section, so you can come and talk all about your books with us. Uh, there's all sorts of witchy content. There's homesteading content. There's basically all the content that I create in the Discord, so if you'd like to know more about it, you can definitely do that. Also, check out my website, which is hearthandseed.com. And there is a link to that in the show description below that has all of the reviews. It also has homesteading content. It has all oh, recipes and all sorts of really great stuff. It's basically the hub where you can find all of my stuff. You can also learn about my books there, which is great. You can see my art and purchase that if you'd like to. It's everything you could want and more in my website. <laughs> so definitely check that out. As I said earlier in the show, if you are not a subscriber of Pig and Switchy Corner, make sure you check that out as well. Check out the YouTube. All of the episodes are there. I also do make some dark academia content as well. So if that's your jam and that's what you want to listen to maybe while you're reading, you should definitely go check that out. I have a new one that I actually just released this week and it's so good. I love it. It's probably the best one I've ever made and uh, so great. I love it. So <laughs> go check all that stuff out and I will see you all next time. So everybody out there who's listened, thank you for joining me. Take care and be safe.